In this video, we'll be looking at some more conditional permutation problems. Our first one is five math books and four English books are to be put on a shelf. How many permutations are possible if the math books must be kept together and the English books must be kept together? So we have a total of nine books that are going to be placed on our shelf. And let's start with the math books on the left here. So these five will be math books. And then these four will be English books. And then whatever number we get for our permutations this way, we can double that for when we put our English books on the left. All right, so when we're stacking our books, we have five math books to choose from to put up here in the first spot. So there's five books. And then um, I only have four books left to be put up next to this one. And then three, and then two, and then one. So now I have my math book stacked on my shelf. Then next to this math book, I have four ways to pick my English book, and then three ways, and then two ways, and then one way. So if we do uh, the math here, we can see that we get 2,880. Now if we want to um, account for putting the English books on the left and the math books on the right, all we need to do then is double this number. So I can see then that I have 5,760 permutations. Our next problem, how many different four-digit odd counting numbers can be formed if no repetition of digits is permitted? So in this one, we have the restriction that there are four digit numbers. So I can just put my four spots. And in order for it to be an odd number, the digit in the units place has to be an odd digit. So I can choose from one, three, five, seven, or nine for this spot. So I have five ways that I can choose a digit for the uh, unit's position. Okay. We're going to use our fundamental counting principle, so we'll be multiplying all of these. And I had 10 digits to start with, and I've placed my unit's digit here. Then that leaves me with, let me list my digits here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay, so I had 10 digits to start with. For this lead spot, I cannot use a zero. So I only have eight digits that I can choose from now. Because I started with 10, I used one of those for the units position, and I can't use zero in the lead position. So there's only eight here. Now these two middle positions, the hundreds place and the tens place, there's no restriction there except uh, that I'm not allowed uh, to repeat digits. So I've used two digits in the first and the last position. That leaves eight digits left. So I have eight here and then once I use one here, I can't repeat it, so I'll only have seven for this position. If I do the uh, multiplication here, this gives me 2,240 numbers. Let's do one more. All right, we have an elf, a gnome, a fairy, a pixie, and a leprechaun are to sit in a line. So there's one, two, three, four, 
five. Okay, so that's their seats. Our question is, how many different ways can they be seated if the elf and the gnome insist on sitting next to each other? So we're going to need to do those separately. If we put our elf and our gnome in these two positions, and there's only one way to pick an elf and one way to pick a gnome, then we have three more persons to choose from for this spot, and then two more for this spot, and one more for this spot. All right, then um, we need to consider what if they switched chairs. So again, we have a three, two, and one here. So this is six for this one and six for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and move the elf and gnome down a seat so that the elf and the gnome are in these two seats. But again, once I've seated them, then there's three ways to pick someone for this chair, and then two for this chair, and one for this chair. So we have six on this one. And then when I uh, switch those chairs, I could put my gnome here in this chair and my elf in this one. So I have three, two, and one like this. And then let's put the elf and the gnome, let's move them over again. So my elf here and my gnome here. Again, three ways, two ways and one way. That's six. And then if we uh, exchange those chairs, my gnome here and my elf here, I have three times two, and then that gives me six there. And then let's move them over one more spot. And so my elf would be in this spot and my gnome in this spot. And those are the last two seats. So um, this will be my last one. There's six for that one. But we can uh, exchange those chairs so that my gnome is in this one and my elf is in this one. Okay, three, two. So there's six. So we would total these up. There's two, four, six, eight. Um, eight sixes. So I have 48 ways to seat 